Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. In today's Basics for Beginners video, we're gonna talk about probably the most forgotten about emissions control component on a carbureted 80s car. And that is the early fuel evaporative system. So if you wanna spend five minutes, learn a little bit more about this component, hopefully have an understanding of how it works and what to do if yours isn't, then stay tuned, we're gonna jump in and get started. Okay, so what is the early fuel evaporative system? This is a system designed to heat up the air fuel mixture after it passes through the choke or the carburetor and before it gets to the intake valves of your cylinders. In six cylinder motors, this is usually a uh, electric grid that's placed between the carburetor and the intake manifold that warms up for a certain period of time when you first start the car. In V8 motors, this is a system with a valve that actually directs exhaust gases from one side of your uh, exhaust manifold over and through the intake manifold out the other side to rapidly heat it up. What this is supposed to do is it's supposed to provide a much hotter fuel air mixture uh, when the engine is still kind of cold. That in turn has the effect of creating a better mix, more even fuel air distribution, and it also prevents raw gas from forming along the walls of the intake runner, which as you may or may not know, happens when your car is cold. And it does this because when engines are cold, they require more fuel, therefore they run richer and pollute the environment more. So General Motors decided that this would be a good way to get that choke open faster and get the cars running leaner quicker. When the system isn't working, you may notice your car's a little more sluggish off the line, especially when it's cold. Uh, you may have stalling issues when the vehicle first starts up. And if it's working too well and staying on too long, you may get some detonation or you may have an overheating issue when the car is warmed up. Right now, real quick, we're gonna run through all the components of the system and I'm gonna show you how to check it to make sure yours is working properly. Let's go ahead and jack the car up. We're gonna to have to get underneath and we'll take a look and get started. Hey, so here we are over on the driver's side of the car. Uh, like I said, it's a very simple system. It's only really, I guess, two main components. First being a thermal vacuum switch that you'll find in your intake manifold. And the second being the actual EFE valve itself, which will uh, close when the engine first fires up and is cold and will then redirect a small amount of exhaust gases back up through the intake manifold and out the other side to uh, heat up your intake manifold a lot faster. So over here you'll find the thermal vacuum switch. All that does is draw manifold vacuum from a T in the vacuum system, uh, then goes to a very small pipe and runs down to our actual uh, EFE valve, which is located right below our driver's side exhaust manifold. I tried to get a shot of the actual thermal vacuum switch, but it is kind of buried under here, uh, the far driver's side corner of the intake manifold under a lot of these ignition wires and hoses. But it is a simple switch uh, vacuum is drawn in through the top. When the engine is cold, the valve will open up and that will send the vacuum down to the lower hose, which then directs it down to a small pipe and back here to the actual EFE valve itself. So here we are underneath our driver's side of the car. This guy here in the center is the actual EFE valve. You can see the pipe that leads up to that thermal vacuum switch. And easiest way to find it is just follow your exhaust manifold down to almost the Y pipe, and you'll see it right here. This one looks fairly new because this car doesn't really see bad weather. Uh, but I've seen them all rusted and beat up. So this is just to show you what you're looking for. Here's a view of the back side of the valve. You can see the rod that sticks out and is attached to a mechanism which controls the actual butterfly valve inside the manifold. When the engine is cold and started, 
that rod coming out of the valve will retract closing it. All right, so now that you know where you should be looking, next step is to start the motor on your cold engine and see if that little uh, rod down there retracts. If it doesn't, it could only be one of th three things. A stuck valve, which case you just want to take some WD-40 or another lubricant, try and free up that rod and that mechanism down there. Uh, if that doesn't work, then you want to just disconnect it and check and make sure you have vacuum down there with the car cold. If you don't have vacuum down there, then you want to work your way back up to the thermal vacuum switch. If you have vacuum coming out of the bottom port of the thermal vacuum switch, then you have a bad valve. Uh, if you don't have vacuum coming out of the bottom port of the thermal vacuum switch and your valve is getting vacuum from the hose that leads to the top port, then you have a bad thermal vacuum switch. You can replace either one, whichever applies to you. That's it. It's a very simple system, very easy to diagnose. Well, guys, I hope you found this video helpful and you learned a little bit more about your early fuel evaporative system in your 80s carbureted vehicle. You know, I love talking 80s emission control components and trying to get these cars to run the way they should. So if there's another system you want to learn more about, please let me know in the comments section. I'll try to add it to the list. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next one.